Hello and welcome to a tutorial series about making a exploring game, an adventure game like Zelda or a dungeon crawling game, going working through dungeons or just a game where you're working through a world. Now I'm going to be using Click Team Fusion as we do at Impact Gamers and um, I'll take you from the beginning um, to the end over seven sessions. So I'm loading up Click Team Fusion which is available for free at www clickteam.com and when you load it up it starts off like this we want a new application lots of ways to do it I'm gonna just press file and new um, and we've got frame one frames are our levels and so we're gonna enter frame one I can just click on the number one and it'll go straight there nothing in our game at the moment if I run our application there's nothing there it's a white screen so we need to insert something and they're all called objects so we insert a new object and I want to see all the objects I want an active one and I press OK click to drop it down this is going to be our player so I'm going to rename it and the properties window can be used for that or we can press F2 if you want but I'm going to click on about properties it's currently called active I'm going to call it player um, right it doesn't move at all and so I'm going to change the movement and under its type I'm going to change that to eight directions which allows you to use the arrow keys you can change those in your application properties but for the moment we'll use the arrow keys and that's all right I'm happy with that I could go and change speed and acceleration oops I've just pulled the properties window off I will pull it back uh, pop it back there we go um, speed acceleration and different things that I can change so uh, there's my player. I'm going to change the way it looks, but only briefly. I'm not going to concentrate on that. There's other great tutorials on YouTube, but I can either double click on this like that, or I can right click and click edit on it there, or I can do the same there. It's the same object. Um, or I could just press enter. So I'm going to zoom in using not the frying pan, but the magnifying glass. I'm going to just draw some eyes on it. So get the brush tool and two eyes, change the size down, there we go, and he's going to be looking quite concerned. Okay, there's my player. Um, now, I haven't got anything else in the world, I'm going to add some walls into this, and I'm going to add them in as backdrop objects. Now, when we insert an object, active is what we use a lot of the time, but backdrop objects um, from the background you've got a quick backdrop which is a sort of color fill or a repeating pattern or just backdrop now if I put it down um, it has a little icon of some scenery I'm just going to double click on that I'm going to clear it oops cancel I'm going to clear it by pressing that icon I'm going to it's not a horse's head from Minecraft it's a fill tool and I'm going to just make a wall color brown there we go now I'm going to rename this, just press F2, I'm going to call it wall H because I'm going to stretch it out and make it horizontal and that'll be my wall H and then I'm going to duplicate it which makes a twin of it, oh no I'm going to clone it to make a twin of it, duplicating I'd have the same thing, cloning it I now have a separate one, they're just touching each other, now I'm going to change that to wall V for vertical click on the object once sorry I didn't say that before you can cycle through selection resizing and rotation selection resizing and rotation just by clicking but if you click too quick you get to the edit window so let's just do that now I can also turn on the grid and snapping to grid if I want things to align really nicely I can do that oh, I also want these to be probably exactly well, close enough to the grid size which starts off being 32 by default but you can change it with the first option there we go I've got some walls now nothing's gonna happen when I go through the walls I will just go through the walls and that's because we haven't got any code in our game and we do that in the event editor so I click on that and this is the event editor for our frame one for our level one and in simple new condition if the player collision with if it was something active would use another object but I'm going to choose backdrop. So if it hits the backdrop and it says if it collides with the background, we want the player to stop. Now, 
you're going to be disappointed because from experience I know that that doesn't work on its own. Backdrop objects have their own properties of what type of object they are in the backdrop and that's in the runtime options. So obstacle type currently none. I'm going to change it to an obstacle. Platform and ladder are going to be useless to us because of we're not using platform controls. So let's change this as well. Select wall H, uh, change that to obstacle. Now they're an obstacle, collision is going to actually matter. There we go. And then I can quickly build my world. I can hold down control on the keyboard and pull and see the little plus sign on my icon, on my cursor. That means it's going to add another one in. So I can start adding things in. And I can run my application. So there's one more thing that we haven't got any boundaries because they're all the same object, the same rule applies. Um, well, because they're all background, the same rule applies. I can leave my play area. So I'm just going to add one final condition before I finish the basic part of this tutorial. New condition, if my player position if I test it and if it's going out the top out the right down the bottom or off to the left I'm just gonna right click underneath the player to get my actions and I wanted to stop so now I cannot leave the area so that's it for basic I'm just gonna do a little bit more advanced if you want to go more advanced and I'm gonna to have a look at changing my frame size. So my application has its own under the window properties. It's got its own size for my frame. It's got its own size. Now, if I make the frame bigger than the application, so let's go crazy and pretty much nearly double it roughly and do 1000 Oops, for the height and 1200 for the width. Whoops, or, or tens of thousands. All right, there we go. Um, you can see we've got this sort of cutout line, this dashed line, which shows where our screen is. And then we've got a further one where it can go to. Now, this means that when I run my application, I can now, I can't go off the top, but I can go off the side and I can go off the bottom because there is more frame there. I'm not leaving the frame. So that's not too helpful without following me. So I want a rule where I'm always being followed. And that's the cogs. So click on new condition, click on always, and it's to do with the storyboard controls. We right click scrolling. We want to center the window position on something and that's gonna be on me, the player. If you're struggling to find that, you can just click relative to, and I'm the only active object. Press okay. So now when I run the application, I am disappearing. We've got a slight issue that when I'm walking in white, you can't tell that I'm moving. So I'm gonna use that quick backdrop as the final part of this section. Um, I'm gonna insert a new object, quick backdrop, click to drop it in. Now I already know my size, so let me type it in. I'm 1,200 by 1,000. Um, and it's covering over my other background. So if I right click on it, I can order it and send it to the back. I can then um, change the way it is. So it, I don't want it to be an obstacle, but change the way it is in its settings, that's right. Look for motif, that's a repeating pattern, oh, and this really hurts your eyes. So if you suffer from any sort of epilepsy or anything, look away. I should have said that before I moved. Right, so let's make it look like some ground. We can press edit and change the motif in the same way that we change the um, change the active object. And um, let's just add some grit and stuff. Let's make it quite light and then get some lines and just add some grit down there. Sorry for the lots of red click markings of where I'm clicking. Is that, that's too light, there we go. And that will be tiled and repeated. There we go. I'll turn off my grid to make it more visible. Now I'm pressing F8 to run my application. There we go. It's a bit more obvious that I'm moving. There we go, and I can explore my world. The benefit of using uh,
background objects is you can have a lot more background objects than active objects. Active objects max out at a thousand, whereas backdrop, I think you can have tens of thousands. So um, there we go. You can create more uh, backdrop objects that are obstacles and add them in for your trees and for your other things. But this is just looking at it in a basic way. So have fun with that. Make sure you save your work. And I will see you next session.